captura de un delincuente que las vidas de las personas. Hey, ya no quiero que haya de madre, por favor. Ya no quiero que haya de madre, por favor. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. You already know what's up. Suense la Suburban, we about to take a ride. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Ron the Strong. Your host here, JC. When El Chapo got a life sentence, and I think 30 years on top, the question was who should lead the Sinaloa cartel? New times, new ways of doing things. El Mayo was the co-founder, so a Vice News reporter reported in July said that El Mayo wanted them out. I don't know how true that is. I think it's kind of true. <laughs> you know, old school and new school never, never agrees. El Chapo's been married three times. Number of kids, it, it said between eight and 16, small army. And this is the way that these cartels work in Mexico is that it's always family ran. Uh, whoever's an outsider is very, very close to the family. So he's grown up with the family. So that's how they run these businesses. But there's also reports that El Chapo's son, Los Chapitos, are fighting between them. When the Mexican security forces captured one of his sons, Tienes gente adentro? No, no tengo. Listo. Son mis hijas, oiga. Ya, pare. Diles que paren todo. Ya. Ya. No veo más. Ya no alcanzo a ver más. No, así es. Pásame cinta, pásame cinta, güey. No puedo. Ya. Ya. Ya paren todo, oiga. Ya paren todo. Ya paren todo. Ya paren todo. Ya tranquilo, ya ni modo. The mouse, Guzman, el ratón. You know, I think it was more of an embarrassment for the Mexican government because they had to let him go. It doesn't surprise those that know how powerful the cartels are actually in these areas in Mexico. Only those that have been there and seen it and like actually lived it, know. 
That guy at the beginning of the video that's shooting that gun from the floor, that's a 50 caliber. Every time that gun goes off, the whole floor shakes. These are the kind of weapons that these cartels are able to afford because of the money. Sinaloa has always been a hot area. It's always been in the drug game from day one. Everyone's <laughs> smoked brick weed with all the sticks and all the seeds and all that shit. And everybody's also smoked weed that's grown in Sinaloa. Several drug lords have been born there, so it's a lifestyle there. It is a lifestyle. A lot of cartel members have come from this area. Let's just put it like this, man. The Sinaloa cartel is still very powerful. All his kids are in the business. Everyone's in the business. I mean, even his wife. As long as there's demand, there will be supply. And there will be bad guys and good guys. I, I've said it before. The money, the power, even at a smaller range is addicting. So just imagine at that level, the Ferraris, the million dollar homes, would you be able to stop? You know, this is why there's so many wars down there because people get a taste of that money. And as long as the US is consuming 80% of that, guess what? They will be bad guys. Hey, what are we gonna do, right? This is why it's important for us to do work. This is why it's important for us to talk to our kids. This is why it's important for us to actually be real. We live in different times, social media, new kind of drugs, new kind of crimes. The fact remains is that if you get into that lifestyle, you're gonna either be dead or in prison for life. You enjoy the shit out of those years making that money, driving that nice car, wearing those big chains and those diamond earrings and all that stuff. But when you're sitting in that jail cell, looking at those pictures from that Bentley, that clothes, everything you were doing, but you're sitting in a cell looking at those pictures. I, this is why I chose to change because I started to see that that life was never gonna get any better. I had to change my whole mindset because you can get out of prison and still be in prison out here. You'll be a prisoner to all your vices, whether that's women, money, drugs, it doesn't matter. They're all vices and they all hurt you and stop you from growing. Being a kid and wanting to be a narco and, and wanted to you know, have songs made of me and, and sell birds and all that shit, was a pipe dream. I was a lost kid. Didn't know right from wrong. All I knew was wrong. <laughs> so here it is. Real. Hey, my name's Julio. Julio Cesar. I'm from Moroleon, Guanajuato. But I was born in Chicago. I've been raised all over Mexico, from Apasingan, to Zacatecas, to Monterrey, to Juarez, to Saltillo, to Colima, to Mazatlán, to Oaxaca, Mexico City. I've been around the block. Growing up in Chicago on the south side, being part of a gang that later tried to set me up and then tried to kill me. I had to get into another gang to be able to survive. That gang didn't like me either. So at the end of the day, I ended up alone. And then I ended up in prison. You know what? I'd rather be alone than have bad company. Mas vale solo que mal acompañado. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane. Live savage and remember, 
You only have one life to live, man. Live it out here. Free. Fuck prison. Catch you guys on the rebound.